In this video, we're going to be discussing differentiation and integration of power series. And it's going to turn out that we can take derivatives and integrals of our power series in the same way that we can take derivatives and integrals of polynomials, which is going to be a really powerful tool for us for using power series in applications. So suppose I have a um, power series here, the sum of ck x minus a to the k, which would be a power series centered at A, and suppose it converges um, in an interval around my center, so I have some radius of convergence R that's greater than zero, and defines a function on that interval. Then my function um, that's equal to that power series is differentiable, which means it's continuous, um, for the same radius of convergence. And we can take, or we can find, excuse me, our derivative um, by just differentiating our power series term by term. So if I have this um, f of x being equal to this sum of c k x minus a to the k, then my f prime is just going to be the sum of k times c k x minus a to the k minus 1. So we're able to just use that power um, derivative rule on each term in my power series. And it's going to um, have the same radius of convergence, so the, the derivative is going to be equal to this, this sum using the term-by-term -term differentiation um, for the same radius of convergence around the center. So if I have a function that has a certain radius of convergence when I take the derivative, the radius of convergence stays the same. So this is the same radius of convergence as for um, f of x equal to its power series representation. Okay. Now we haven't said anything about the interval of convergence. We don't know if, what kind of behavior we might have at the endpoints, but the radius of convergence is going to stay the same. So what about the um, integral? Well, the indefinite integral of our function can be found by integrating our power series term by term. So I can have my integral of f of x. If f of x is this sum of ck x minus a to the k, then if I take the integral of that sum, that's just going to be the sum of the integrals of the different terms that I have there. So I can say I have um, then a sum of ck x minus a to the k plus 1 all over k plus 1 plus my constant of integration c. So I'm able to just use that antiderivative power rule on each term. Um, where that's going to be equal to the indefinite integral there um, for the same um, radius of convergence. So still the same radius of convergence as for f. Okay, as our power series representation for f of x had. So anytime you take the derivative or an integral of a power series, your radius of convergence will not change. Okay, so radius of convergence is the same as f of x, but the interval of convergence may be different. Okay, so we'd have to do a little bit more work to see what's happening in terms of convergence at the endpoints of our interval. So let's use these um, ideas in two different examples. So we'll take our nice um, geometric power series here as our function. I'm going to have f of x is 1 over 1 minus x. We know that's equal to our sum um, of x to the k, where that's 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. And it converges for all x um, strictly between negative 1 and 1. So let's find the power series for f prime, find its interval of convergence, and say what function that power series um, for f prime is representing. So I'm going to start with this 1 over 1 minus x equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k. And I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x whoops, is going to be equal to the derivative of this sum of k equals 0 to infinity x to the k. So my derivative of um, 1 over 1 minus x well, that'll be 1 minus x to the negative 1, negative 1 minus x to the negative 2 times my negative 1. So I'll have 1 over 1 minus x squared when I would simplify that. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 over 1 minus x squared is equal to, well, now I can just do the derivatives 
of each of those different terms. So I'm going to have this is equal to a sum from k equals 0 to infinity of kx to the k minus 1. Okay. Now, I can go one step further and just simplify this a little bit. Notice that when I would plug in k equals 0, that first term would just be 0. So I could re-index this and say this is a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k times x to the k minus 1. So we know that our original um, function here had a radius of convergence of 1. So this still has um, a radius of convergence of 1. And it's still centered at a equals 0. So I have this is centered at 0. And I know um, my interval will go from negative 1 to 1. So the question is, um, is it going to converge or diverge at each of those different endpoints? So we have to test for the convergence at the endpoints separately, since we don't know if the interval of convergence is going to be the same or different as it was for our original function. So we plug in x equals negative 1. That would give me a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k times negative 1 to the k minus 1. Well, notice that's going to diverge. I'm just going to have an alternating series here where the, the magnitude of the terms would be um, just k, and that's not going to be going to 0 as k goes to infinity. It'll be going off to infinity. Um, similarly, if I plug in the endpoint of 1, I'll have a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k times 1 to the k minus 1, which is just a sum of k's, and that also diverges. Okay, Both of these diverge by the divergence test. Okay, So here we can say that our interval of convergence just abbreviating this interval of convergence here, is just going to be from negative 1 to 1, not including those endpoints. Okay, so let's look at finding an um, integral now. Okay, so I was able to use the tool of um, differentiation to find a power series representation for 1 over 1 minus x squared. And now I'd like to um, take the integral of both sides of this 1 over 1 minus x equals the sum of x to the k um, to get a power series representation for the integral of f of x. So let's see. I want to take the integral of both sides. So the integral of 1 over 1 minus x dx is going to be my integral of the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k dx. So my integral of 1 over 1 minus x would be negative the log of 1 minus x. And then this is equal to the integral of my sum, which I know is just going to be the sum of the antiderivatives of each of the terms, which will be x to the k plus 1 all over k plus 1, and then I would have plus c. Okay, so we're not quite done yet here, um, because I do have something um, on the left-hand side. Um, I don't, I'm not going to be leaving my answer as just this sum of something plus c. I know it's equal to this negative log of 1 um, minus x, so I'm going to be able to solve for c. Okay, so we know that this equation here has to be true for all x, so it also has to be true for a particular x. So this is true for all x. So also for particular x. Okay, so if we plug in something like x equals 0, okay, notice that that left-hand side will give me um, log of 1, or negative log of 1, which is just 0. The right-hand side, plugging in 0 for x, I'll have a sum of 0, so that's just 0. So my c is going to end up being equal to 0. So I can say that negative log 1 minus x here is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of x to the k plus 1 over k plus 1. Okay. So let's do a couple more things here. Notice that... Um, the sum that I would have here, if I plug in k equals 0, this is going to be x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3, etc. Okay, so if I wanted to re-index this, I could just call this the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of um, x to the k over k, because this is really just like x to the 1 over 1, x to the 2 over 2. Um, 
So that just simplifies it a little bit for when I answer this next part about the interval of convergence. So I've got my negative log of one minus um, x here being equal to the sum from k equals one to infinity of x to the k over k. I know that my radius of convergence did not change when I um, would take the, the integral of what I had originally. And I know I'm still centered at a equals zero. So the question is, does this series here converge or diverge at negative one and one? Let's just move this part up, give ourselves a little bit more room. So we're going to test the endpoints. So at x equals negative 1, we have a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k. Well, we recognize that as the alternating harmonic series, which converges. Okay. What about if I plug in x equals 1? Well, that's going to be a sum of 1 over k. And we know that that's the harmonic series, which diverges. OK. So in this case, my interval of convergence, I'm running out of room a little bit here. Let's write it right here. So we see that our interval of convergence okay, will include negative 1, but not 1. Okay, so we've got x between negative 1, but not including 1. Same radius of convergence, but a different interval of convergence when we took that integral of our power series.